Hello and good morning. Thank you very much for listening. Today I would like to create a video on variable frequency oscillators. Variable frequency oscillator. But before I get into that, allow me to tell you why that's interesting to me. Well, perhaps maybe if you've watched one or two of my other videos, you might notice that I'm interested in radio. And some people are interested in ham radio and CB. Well, I'm actually a little bit more interested in radio scanners. Radio scanners. They're fascinating to me. And so then I went on YouTube and I typed in how a radio scanner works. That's the search. Then I hit search. And the YouTube results were not great. Uh, among the top 10 results, I did not find a single video from somebody explaining how a radio scanner works. Now, I'm not blaming anyone, but I'm just telling you the perspective that I'm coming from. So, the essence of what a radio scanner does is it scans through the various frequencies on radio bands and it stops when it detects a signal that it can receive. So what it's using is a variable frequency oscillator. Now for this video, I'll be relying on Wikipedia. And I'll just be putting some nice pictures to the text, to the best of my ability. So here goes. Today I will be talking about a variable frequency oscillator. A variable frequency oscillator, VFO, in electronics, is an oscillator whose tuned frequency can be tuned, i.e. varied, over some range. It is a necessary component in any tunable radio receiver or transmitter that works by the superheterodyne principle and controls the frequency to which the apparatus is tuned. Now before I continue with the discussion on what a variable frequency oscillator is, perhaps it's a good time now to explain what a superheterodyne receiver is. So very, very briefly, a superheterodyne receiver, often shortened to superhet, is a type of radio receiver that uses frequency mixing to convert a received signal to a fixed intermediate frequency, IF, which can be more conveniently processed than the original carrier frequency. It was invented by U.S. engineer Edwin Armstrong in 1918 during World War I. Virtually all modern radio receivers use the superheterodyne principle. Well, it might be redundant, but I'm just going to go back and read everything again about the variable frequency oscillator. A variable frequency oscillator, VFO, in electronics is an oscillator whose frequency can be tuned, i.e. varied, over some range. It is a necessary component in any tunable radio receiver or transmitter that works by the superheterodyne principle and controls the frequency to which the apparatus is tuned. Purpose. In a simple superheterodyne receiver, the incoming radio frequency signal from the antenna is mixed with the VFO output signal tuned to thus, producing an intermediate frequency signal that can be processed downstream to extract the modulated information. Depending on the receiver design, the IF signal frequency is chosen to be either the sum of the two frequencies at the mixer inputs. Frequency in plus frequency low, I guess. This is called up conversion. Or more commonly, the difference frequency, the difference in frequency, which is down conversion. In addition to the desired IF signal and its unwanted image, the mixing product of an opposite sign above. Well, I'm reading off the script and uh, it's a little bit beyond my understanding and it's using technical jargon. Okay, so allow me to read this again. It's very technical, so I'm not even sure I understand all of it at the moment. Once again, the purpose of a variable frequency oscillator is the following. In a simple superheterodyne receiver, the incoming radio frequency signal at frequency FIN from the antenna is mixed with the VFO output signal tuned to F low, 
producing an intermediate frequency, IF, signal that can be processed downstream to extract the modulated information. Depending on the receiver design, the IF signal frequency is chosen to be either the sum of the two frequencies at the mixer inputs, up conversion, which is F in plus F low, or more commonly, the difference frequency, down conversion, F in minus F low. In addition to the desired IF signal and its unwanted image, the mixing product of opposite sign above, the mixer output will also contain the two original frequencies, F in and F low, and various harmonic combinations of the input signals. These undesired signals are rejected by the IF filter. If a double balanced mixer is employed, the input signals appearing at the mixer outputs are greatly attenuated, reducing the required complexity of the IF filter. The disadvantage of using a VFO as a heterodyning oscillator is that only a small portion of the radio receiver, the sections before the mixer, such as the preamplifier, need to have a wide bandwidth. The rest of the receiver can be finely tuned to the IF frequency. In a direct conversion receiver, the VFO is tuned to the same frequency as the incoming radio frequency, and F, IF, and 0 equals 0 hertz, and F, IF, just intermediate frequency, equals 0 hertz. Demodulation takes place at baseband using low-pass filters and amplifiers. In a radio frequency, RF, transmitter, VFOs are often used to tune the frequency of the output signal, often indirectly through a heterodyning process, similar to that described above. Other uses include chirp generators for radar systems, where the VFO is swept rapidly through a range of frequencies, timing signal generation for oscilloscopes, and time domain reflectometers, reflectometers, and variable frequency audio generators used in musical instruments and audio test equipment. Okay, I'm going to pause. And the link I opened up was direct conversion receiver. Okay, bear with me because I'm going to read the basic definition for a direct conversion receiver, DCR for short. Also known as a homo, as a homodyne synchrodyne or zero IF receiver is a radio receiver design that demodulates the incoming radio signal using synchronous detection driven by a local oscillator whose frequency is identified to or very close to the carrier frequency of the intended signal. This is in contrast to the standard superheterodyne receiver where this is accomplished only after an initial conversion to an intermediate frequency. Whew, complicated. Oh heck, while we're at it, I'm going to read in a basic definition of what an electronic filter is. Let's just add the definition. Electronic filters are a type of signal processing filter in the form of electrical circuits. This article covers those filters consisting of lumped electronic components as opposed to distributed element filters. That is, using components and interconnections that in analysis can be considered to exist at a single point. These components can be in discrete packages or part of an integrated circuit. Electronic filters remove unwanted frequency components from the applied signal, enhance wanted ones, or both. They can be passive or active, analog or digital, high pass, low pass, band pass, band stop, band rejection notch, or all pass, discrete time sampled, or continuous time, linear or nonlinear, infinite pulse response, or finite pulse response. Oh boy, I've got a lot of learning to do. Okay, once again, this was supposed to be a video on variable frequency oscillators. So if you've been following along, I gave a basic definition on a VFO, and then I described its purpose, which was very technical. And because it was technical, I added a bunch of definitions in there as well. So now the next category are types of variable frequency oscillators. 
or VFOs. There are two main types of VFO in use, analog and digital, and I will spare you definitions of those. Analog VFOs. An analog VFO is an electronic oscillator where the value of at least one of the passive components is adjustable under user control so as to alter its output frequency. The passive component whose value is adjustable is usually a capacitor, but could be a variable inductor. Um, yeah, like crystal set radios really work by tuning through the band with either a variable capacitor or a variable inductor. So an analog VFO, I guess, uses both of those discrete components or passive components. Okay, so the main definition here was that there are two main types of VFO in use, analog and digital. So I just covered analog VFOs. And then under analog VFOs, it provides two more paragraphs which further define an analog VFO, and that's a tuning capacitor and a varactor. So I guess I'll read them. A tuning capacitor, the variable capacitor, is a mechanical device in which the separation of a series of interleaved metal plates is physically altered to vary its capacitance. Adjustment of this capacitor is sometimes facilitated by a mechanical step-down gearbox to achieve fine tuning. Next, Varactor. And it says to also see other articles called Varactor and Voltage Controlled Oscillator. Once again, we are looking at Variable Frequency Oscillator. So note to self to look up Voltage Controlled Oscillator, VCO. Okay, so a Varactor, under the definition of an analog VFO, a reversed biased semiconductor diode exhibits capacitance. Since the width of its non-conducting depletion region depends on the magnitude of the reverse bias voltage, this voltage can be used to control the junction capacitance. The varactor bias voltage may be generated in a number of ways, and there may need to be no significant moving parts in the final design. Varactors have a number of disadvantages, including temperature drift and aging, electronic noise, low Q factor, and non-linearity. Well, that's getting off topic, We're talking about variable frequency oscillators. Okay, next, well, we just covered the one type of VFO, which was an analog type, and now I'm going to read digital VFOs. Modern radio receivers and transmitters usually use some form of digital frequency synthesis to generate their VFO signal. The advantages include smaller designs, lack of moving parts, the higher stability of set frequency reference oscillators, and the ease with which preset frequencies can be stored and manipulated in the digital computer that is usually embedded in the design in any case. It is also possible for the radio to become extremely frequency agile, which is a separate clickable definition. So we're talking about digital VFOs, and it's saying it is also possible for the radio to become extremely frequency agile in that the control computer could alter the radio's tuned frequency many tens, thousands, or even millions of times a second. This capability allows communications receivers effectively to monitor many channels at once perhaps using Digital Selective Calling, DSC, technique, techniques to decide when to open an audio output channel and alert users to incoming communications. Pre-programmed frequency agility also forms the basis of some military radio encryption and stealth techniques. Extreme frequency agility lies at the heart of spread spectrum techniques that have gained mainstream acceptance in computer wireless networking, such as Wi-Fi. There are disadvantages to digital synthesis, such as the inability of a digital synthesizer to tune smoothly through all the frequencies, but with the channelization of many radio bands, this can also be seen as an advantage in that it prevents radios from operating in between two recognized channels. Digital frequency synthesis relies on stable crystal-controlled reference frequency sources. Crystal-controlled oscillators are more stable than inductively and capacitively controlled oscillators. Their disadvantage is that the changing frequency, more than a small amount, 
requires changing the crystal, but frequency synthesizer techniques have made this unnecessary in modern designs. Okay, next the paragraph is entitled Digital Frequency Synthesis. Well, it's been technical enough. I think I'm going to stop it there just so I can whip this one together and add some pictures. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been helpful. And once again, as I've said in some of my previous videos, I'm not an expert. But I am an enthusiast of electronics. But thank you very much for listening and have a good day. Oscillate.